what is supply chain so supply chain basically we we know what it is you it is a network between a company and its suppliers to produce and distribute a specific product to final buyer right um so it's a it's the chain basically it's a chain because it starts from one end and goes to the other and has some kinks between so basically if uh, if it starts from the producer it goes to a middleman then goes to a supplier then maybe goes to some some factory where it is assembled so it that it can be any good goods basically or any sort uh, kind of like uh, automobile parts maybe farm goods maybe fruits vegetables anything uh, mm-hmm. factory parts vehicles anything so these are like produced and then they go through several stages and finally go to the buyer and buyer does not here mean end consumer most of the time it can mean uh, retail businesses as well those are the real buyers which buy it from factories and keep it at their stores and then we buy it from them right so why do we care, care about supply chain so basically the first thing comes it, it is a very huge market so like a lot of industries are try, uh, like always want to tap into it a lot of major corporations have their hands in it because uh, in 2020 the market was valued at 15.85 billion dollars and it is expected to get go grow towards 31 billion US dollars so this is a like a very growing field it is it has been going for a long time and it is still going and it will always grow because because without supply chain nothing happens we we saw that in covid right uh, when when supply chain of some goods stop everything stops the kind of the whole nation stops right so that's why we want to talk about supply chain and supply chain uh, is like very um important and beneficial and uh, there there have been a lot of examples where if if a company or an organization or a corporation gets control or gets hold and utilizes their supply chain uh, effectively or efficiently then they have a major advantage over their comp- corporations uh, for this i would like to talk about like a company called asian paints if you have seen this video in youtube by Som- saurav mukherjee i would like recommend it to go and watch so asian paints what they did was to control of their supply chain very early uh, a lot before their competitors so uh, they they bought one of the very few like one of the earliest computers in india one of the first computers in india and they started to u- make use of their technology so ba- basically they started to track everything which which kind of paint was sold where how long did it take to go to which suppliers which suppliers sold it which which type of paint to which buyers everything they kept a, kept a track of and essentially there came a point where they made a decision to cut their businessmen to cut, sorry to cut their middlemen so basically no middle middlemen were there they were directly planning to sell it to retailers the problem was retailers did not have a large warehouse to store the paint so what the company uh, chairman at that time champaklak choksi said uh, came up with the idea because they they had com- control over their supply chain because they had all the information they wanted they uh, created a system where they de- delivered to their retailers directly for four times to five times a day that was a huge difference from what was be- like e- even now retailers get delivered a good or supply uh, with once a week or twice a week they were de- delivering it four times a day and because of that asian paints is the only company in the history of the world in the history of the world to have gained re- um, revenue of 20% per annum for the last six decades they are the company company is improving their revenue 20% per annum f- from 1952 consistently so yeah that's what that's what it gets supply chain is that important even even amazon if you talk about amazon amazon is known for a good erp erp basically uh, translates to enterprise resource management and their supply chain logistics so um, so as i said supply chain taking control of su- supply chain and understanding supply chain and use like effectively changing things in supply chain is very important for companies and it has a huge advantage for them and it has a whole lot of money lot, lot of people working for it so the question comes how do we do that how do we make supply chain efficient or how do we create positive changes in supply chain to to more or less get, gain an advantage over our competitors or maybe make it more efficient save some money same hu- human labor a lot of good things happen when you do that so one of the tools that have come up in recent years 
not recent years actually it has come up a lot lot but recent years it has been a bit more prevalent um, throughout the world so that is iot so we we know the basic of iot we have talked about it in the last event as well and it is not just an iot topic so i'll not go very deep into iot but the basics is iot deals with a network of physical objects or things with embedded so embedded sensors is very important because iot's job is to gain data so at the at the very ground level ground level you need to get get some data from collect data from uh, the environmental factors or anything so that's the job of iot it it creates a network of devices uh, imagine small devices like a less powerful smartphone you have a smartphone right a very less powerful a very simple sm smartphone or a very simple device which has just one kind of sensor your, sen your smartphone has a lot of sensors it can detect light it can detect uh, a lot a lot of things right uh, but imagine that but much simpler it has only one job one kind of sensor has one job so basically one device has one or two sensors and it it is basically sensing and communicating that's its only job collect data and share data maybe it can store data maybe it cannot we'll talk about it later but that's the job of iot and why is it important because without getting this data you cannot make good decisions about supply chain you need some raw input for you to analyze it right without the raw data how can you uh, come up with some decisions so this iot is what what is helping uh, come major corporations in the world right now to uh, attain that raw data and then make decisions about their supply chain so iot can be used to track uh, um, supply goods uh, where it is where, where it has come where it is going it can do some load analysis while traveling it can do uh, you know gps sensing it can temp sense temperature it can sense a lot of things with moisture if if it is a chemical being transported these are important factors right the chemical should not be uh, spoiled so temperature has to be lower than that so all these can be monitored and all this can be uh, collected and then shared among itself and with the cloud and other devices using iot so that's what iot's job is and iot in supply chain as i just mentioned it has a lot of devices which helps with this like gps uh, temperature humidity light levels movement handling speed um, rfid chips smart devices mobile sensors and a lot of stuff which can help in stop supply chain and when you help in supply chain you basically like you basically have a massive advantage uh, benefits so real time assessment uh, condition uh, yeah real time asset condition assess then optimize route planning due to uh, when you have that data of where the goods are traveling how how long it is taking where the stoppage time analysis and stuff then you can plan and uh, optimize data route uh, using that data so a lot lot comes out of that analysis when you do that analysis on the data acquired by iot devices uh, efficient asset, uh, asset management and all this stuff that we just talked about uh, yeah let's move on basically quality quality assessment can also be done by iot device so basically anything which happens you don't need a human factor to be there to supervise everything an iot device can do it it can sense whenever something is wrong and can communicate it to uh, like raise an alarm or something like that which can be all all be possible through iot now comes blockchain now what is the role of blockchain in all this how can blockchain help here so we talked about supply chain that is the most oldest thing out of the three then comes iot which is a bit i would say older blockchain is the newest and hot topic right now and it is it is like come into picture in very recent years but the impact that it has had and the impact it can have is something that is exciting a lot of corporations and this industry as a whole so let's talk about blockchain so the basic definition of blockchain is is uh, whenever you talk about basic definition two words come come into it and those two words is this distributed or you can use decentralized as well and the second is immutable now the order of these words can be uh, debated as me and like himendra were debating it once uh, that which is more important whether it is decentralized or whether it is immutable both both are like very very important in this definition but you can choose your side but at the end of the day i i would i uh, after a lot of discussion i agree with agreed with himendra that basically the most important part of blockchain is that is 
it is decentralized decentralized or distributed so what does that mean basically blockchain is, in, is not stored in a server or a computer or there uh, so basically whenever you go to a website or you you know in internet whenever you go to facebook or youtube there are dedicated servers for maintaining those websites so these these are kind of centralized applications or whenever you have something that is hosted in only one thing then that is centralized even if it is hosted in a multiple uh, setting but only one corporation or only one person has the control over all of them then also it is centralized like um youtube is not only on one server it is on a lot of servers but the the overall control of those servers are with the company so if they decide they want to delete a video they can delete it from all their servers and it will be gone you you can't say anything about it so those are centralized examples even bank servers banks are centralized or corporations are mostly centralized but blockchain is a chain is a ledger basically uh, which is decentralized so decentralized is basically there are nodes which are at independent control so i have a node you can have a node nobody has a control of all the nodes right and every every computer has a copy of blockchain so ledger basically ledger what what do you say ledger imagine a notebook where you write, write down transactions so whenever i pay you 100 rupees you write it down that your balance is 100 rupees then you can pay it to someone that's that's how the world works right now we don't use gold or we don't use anything else we use cash and we use um, bank transactions right i give you 100 100 rupees your bank statements increase it by 100 mine mine decreases it by 100 how does it do that it is they are maintaining a big ledger basically they writing it in one more notebook that i have given you 100 rupees so my balance will decrease by 100 and they are writing it in another uh, in the same notebook that your balance is increasing by 100 rupees and the new balance so this is a ledger it is kind of a notebook it is a software notebook basically where transactions are being written down any kind of transaction but the important part is is it is distributed no one has no company no person no one has control over entire control over it so if you have a lot of computing power you have more com- control some has less control but it is distributed along the world and at the end of the day if you even destroy 99% of the nodes or in a blockchain nodes are computers basically who who con- who are re- who are maintaining the black blockchain and has has a copy of the blockchain so if you even distribute ni- uh, dis- destroy 99.99% of those uh, nodes or computers if even if a single computer has the copy of that blockchain it cannot be it is safe you have to destroy 100% because the data is redundant every node has the entire blockchain so it is very distributed nobody has a single control over it and it has a lot of concepts by which you ensure that uh, no tampering is done that is a bit deeper we will not talk about all, all of those concepts but a lot of cryptography concepts come under it it is very interesting you should look uh, look into it so it it works because uh, what we think other people and uh, incentive theory and a lot of other cool stuff but basically it is a distributed and immutable ledger immutability also comes with the fact that as it is distributed if you want to uh, th- there is no way to go back and change something because everybody has a copy of it if you do it to your ledger it will not mat- match with the other ledgers and there is very cool cryptographic functions that ensure this that you cannot do it uh, using hash and a lot of cool concepts cool let's move on with uh, why is blockchain or how is blockchain important in supply chain and how is it changing the world with supply chain not yet it is in the process of changing it is still a lot of way to go but it is still very very new so let's talk about blockchain in supply chain so we saw that supply chain is important then we saw that iot brings like iot is the base of supply chain it it helps to bring a uh, new data like collect data for supply chain and then you can analyze that data to make some decisions uh, now blockchain comes to effectively uh, store that data in a very safe manner so that it cannot be tampered with and it is very transparent so decentralized way of storing that data that's where bro- blockchain helps so yeah uh, so Uh, you don't have to trust the servers where it, the data is stored you don't have to trust a party where uh, that they will not if 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 some party has access of changing some data you are always scared that uh, someone can change that data right so supply chain when the data is being collected when when you are tracking a good that it is it is it has reached this city and then this city 
you are you are sure that once the data has entered the blockchain it won't it can't be changed and it can't be uh, it can't be tampered with basically that ensures it and a lot of cool concepts like transactions and also can be done through blockchain uh, a tr trustless transaction basically like right now if you want to do deal with a company you have to trust one of like one of the companies have to trust that if i give you the money you will give me the product in on time or something but that can be implemented through blockchain by cryptocurrency transactions that if it, it is all dictated by code so i can't steal your money if if you deliver it in on time the smart contract will all automatically uh, give that money to you if you don't deliver it smart contract will maybe deduct some penalty and give it to you and then give the rest back so this is dictated by code you don't need to trust the other business for this so this is the transactional part other thing is tracking and um, storing the data of supply chain and uh, the input that we are getting from iot into blockchain so that it can't be tampered with that's what we are going to explore today so imagine uh, so imagine this scenario where you go to a store right and you see a new new shipment of maybe apples or oranges applying like coming or maybe a milk or some some food or any any good basically so you want you, what will you do if you want to know where where it has come from how much time has it been sitting on that grocery shelf you basically have to go to the store owner and ask them and you have to trust them to say the truth and they'll ne never say that this is a week old the milk is a maybe cold or this uh, this fruit has been here for 3 days they will always say that it is very fresh it it has come down today in the morning now imagine you have a qr code or something like that with that batch of ship shipment basically a batch of apples and you have a qr code with it you scan that qr code you look up in the blockchain the transaction code and then you can see the entire supply chain with the exact transaction like exact dates and times and time stamps and the details that which which farm has it come from which city has it reached at what point of time and you know and you can trust that data because blockchain data cannot be tampered with as as we established so imagine that world that you are pretty sure about what and that is as us as consumers even the retailers are buying those goods from somewhere else so they can keep track of what is happening and where that is happening and imagine a chemical company whose chemicals got spoiled because temperature got increased now who is accountable for the loss that they can keep track of through blockchain they can because the data is immutable they can be sure that whatever the data is there they can rely and they can see that at which point of time the temperature increased from the threshold and the chemicals were spoiled and uh, who is responsible who is accountable which which part of that supply chain was re responsible so uh, there's a lot of potential in blockchain and it is still a growing field so yeah let's move on to something interesting now that i have bored you all to death um, my friend i guess chirag yeah, right. yeah 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 chirag will move on to the implementation part yeah is my screen visible yeah it's visible yeah 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 so so thanks aditya for explaining the uh, supply chain and iot and blockchain concepts so guys before going to uh, like uh, like making the code for smart contract and uh, i will get you uh, like through the um, basic configurations and uh, smart contract so first we will uh, install metamask so we need to just search for metamask um, so yeah so you will get the first link so we need to, uh, we need to visit and we need to uh, like install from this and as i have already installed so so like i will be following the next step so we will be using uh, remix so remix is a uh, like ethereum network so um, we can like uh, make our own smart contract and deploy to the ethereum network so yeah so now we will be uh, like creating a new uh, smart contract so we will be naming that as i think suppose i think dot soul yeah so so like uh, uh, because of the new version of this uh, uh, remix so we have to like uh, like mention the uh, license so we will be using spdx license so we need to mention this so that compiler comes to know like what's happening so yeah i'll uh, take another right 
so we will be using this uh, license as an MIT license and now uh, we need to define the solid uh, pragma solidity pragma version so we will be defining this here pragma solidity and the version we are going to use will be above uh, 0. Uh, 8.7 0.8.7 yeah so like uh, now now coming to the basics so we need to like name the contract so we will be using contract and the contract name we are suppose using io thing uh, io thing yeah and now so this is what uh, like a basic template uh, we have like created a basic uh, contract with which is having which is not having anything now so first of all um, we will try to like create some variables so we will use address uh, public owner so what we are doing is uh, we are creating a variable name owner which is public and it is of address type so owner will store the address of this smart contract in future so now uh, we will be uh, making a structure so as we know structure so we will be creating a structure suppose let's suppose name it as a display so so it will accept suppose string name so we have created a variable name uh, with a uh, string type and now let's suppose we create a variable name amount so uint amount so what's the difference between uint and int is like in uint uh, we can store only a variable uh, only the number till 256 so 0 to 255 we can store and we can only store the positive numbers here so uh, it we are using uint because uh, we need to like uh, we need to store the amount and the variable and we know that we know that the amount it will be not very much so if if the amount is very big so we can use uint256 so it will be storing the amount take 2 to the power 256 so yeah and then afterwards uh, we will be storing the address of the receiver let's suppose rec receiver address yeah. okay then now we will be uh, making the like array array of type display and we will name it as let's suppose this and now we will also make uh, uh, display from polis so we are we are making this so that we can like append the data so before that uh, we are also going to make a constructor in constructor so so what the uh, role of this con constructor is like when we will uh, compile and we will execute the contract so it will be getting con uh, like executed the first so what we are uh, trying to store here is the uh, owner of the smart contract so we will be saving this to the variable owner so we can store uh, save this using message dot sender so this is an in in inbuilt function so we can use message dot sender so once it will be executed so it will be uh, the address so we know the uh, variable owner is the type of address so the address will be stored in the uh, variable owner so after that now we will be uh, using functions so functions like function uh, let's say balance so we are trying to create a function name balance so that we can calculate the balance uh, in this function so we have balance so what we, uh, to calculate the balance we need the address so what we will do is we will accept the address so let's say address owners let's say so owner uh, is the variable that we are using to get the address mm. yeah so this will be of type public so this is the um, like syntax so we need to mention like it is public and it is view so view is uh, we will use view when we uh, need to like see the state so as this is the state variable defined up in the contract so uh, we need that so we are using view so we will view and it will return um, return let's suppose it will return the balance so balance will be of type uh, integer so we will write uint yeah. and uh, suppose we will say account balance so we will yeah so we will write as return account balance is equals to owners owners dot balance yeah so 
this is this will be the balance function uh, which will be uh, like displaying the balance so after that um, we will be like making a, a function which will be from which we can get some more details like the name amount and the receiver address so basically we are trying to understand the basics of the um, like solidity because after this ahimendra will be telling you about this uh, supply chain smart contract that we have been discussing before so so for that like suppose we create um, that display function yeah so let's let's see uh, it will take string memory so we are using memory here because uh, we will we will be storing the name so like uh, name yeah so the variable name is name so we will be storing this into the blockchain so we need to use memory and it is the type string and after that so basically we are trying to like uh, we will be storing the data into this structure afterwards so for which uh, we are trying to make a function and so display and after this we will use uint for amount and we will use address so address receiver let's say receiver address and yeah so now let's make info list let's store so info list so we have made the uh, like info list structures variable name here so we will use that so info list is equals to display so we will, we will we are calling the structure so first is name so yeah we will write here name name and after that is amount and after that we will write receiver address so receiver address and we will be closing it using semicolon and after this uh, we will be pushing this to the array so this dot push function and info list so the entire data will be getting pushed into this this variable so if we need in future we can call them and now let's uh, also do like basic addition so if we want we can create a function which will perform addition so addition let's say addition else mm -hmm. cnc yeah so it will take suppose two variables so uint uh, a uint b and and it will be uh, let's say okay so we will it will return the uh, addition so we will be returning the total amount so so this function will return so we will use public uh, pure because uh, we are using pure here because um, we don't need to uh, like to use or read any state function uh, state variables so we will be using pure and it will return so returns uh, uint because uh, we will return uint because uh, the total we are like going to return will be an integer so for that we are using uint and it will be a positive number so we are trying to do that using uint and now let's suppose we make a variable called sum to store the sum and after which let's calculate sum is equals to a plus b so yeah and it will basically return sum so so basically uh, this is a like basic contract to understand how like we use the address and how to use the like structure basically and uh, how what is the role of constructor and uh, how can we use functions and also uh, so now like uh, we will be compiling this so um, so like once again something we got some error uh, zero point Ah, oh, yeah, I missed point. Yeah, and here is also an error. Public. Yeah, we miss public here. So public. So so now here in this step, it is in the compiler. So as uh, we have mentioned, zero point eight point seven. So we will be using zero point eight point seven as in compiler, and we will compile it. And. Uh, uh, so we have compiled it and now we will be like deploying it so from here we can deploy it so basically we will deploy it and as you can see there is a green tick and we can see like the com uh, our contract has been de deployed so this was the set display function that we have used so in this like we have we are taking name amount and receiver address let's say 
so before that i will let you know like this these are some addresses for like has been provided so as we have uh, like executed using this address so this will be the uh, like senders uh, what we say the owner of the uh, like this address and let's suppose uh, we take an another address we will copy it from here and now let's go back and let's name as i o think on black chat and it and this your address this so as we have transacted this and we can see like this has been transacted and to see the information more display so we can see like we have stored this in the memory so yeah string name is i o think and basic uh, amount and the receiver's address so after this uh, we have also like made the like function for help that will perform addition so let's try this and let's say uh, the variable name a uh, we we'll, let's say four and variable name b let's say 5 so we will call this and see we can get the 4 plus 5 is 9 and we are it is returning 9 here and we can also check this in the like uh, blockchain network contract so you can see 4 uh, and 5 were passed and the 9 was like saved in the contract and so uh, so yeah, also like we have made made the function called balance so what it will do is it will accept the address and it will just calculate the balance so let's say uh, to get and uh, let's say an address like this and we pass this so basically if we pass this address and call so you can see uh, it is showing the uh, balance and we can also view this uh, in the reserve so we can see this the balance and this uh, this is currently in the form of jwei gray form so this is not in the ethereum form so we can convert to know like how much ethereum it is so yeah and after this so this is the uh, like owner uh, like variable that we have made here so public owner so as we have made the, made the made this as public so we are able to view and what we will do is basically we will call this and to know who is the owner of the contract so we can see 0x5b is the owner of and like is the owner of the contract so we can also see yeah 0x5b is the owner and we have already Uh, like executed this so you can see here is uh, like it is having 9.999 something so what happened is like when we used to like deploy and execute the first time so it will charge the gas fee so basically gas fee is something like uh, it is used to validate the uh, contracts in the network so it uh, it is very nominal and for this this purpose uh, we use uh, gas fee is been used so yeah and so basically this was the uh, basic introduction and after this like uh, what we will be doing is like we will be deploying this to the uh, ethereum so for that uh, let's say uh, this is our smart contract uh, like metamask so what we will do is we will create a a new account so let's say um, account 3 and yes let's create so we will be deploying this contract basically in the test network so here is the um, address so we will uh, like use we will uh, try to get some um, like dummy ethers for this uh, like deploying this so using faucet let's say faucet that's not yeah so this is the website from where we can get some ethers like to yeah so, so like it has said like 0.2 ether has been transferred so we can ch also check this Mm, yeah. Mm, and after connect. Mm, once again. Yeah. So we have some ethers here. So what we will be doing is like we will be deploying this. So from we can go to yeah execution and in this environment we need to pick injected web three. so once we pick this and we need to like deploy so you can see uh, the metamask and we are using rops rops 10 test network you can see here so basically we will be deploying this in the test network and uh, it is in insufficient funds once again uh, what we can say we can try for the account mm okay we have some it here and deploy the
yeah so we have like deployed this so it will take some time and we can see here uh like on it scan it it is like getting pending and on some time it will be getting deployed so yeah basically this was the basic and now like himendra will be telling you about the supply chain contract and the project so yeah himendra please continue yeah yeah wait a second Is my screen visible? Yes, yes. Uh, no, it, yeah, basically, uh, it's for testing purpose. The option thing is for testing purpose. See this uh, once again. Wait a second. Yeah, see this is. Ethereum mainnet is this thing. This is the main Ethereum which we uh, which is exist, and these are test networks like Robson test network, Coven test network, and all that stuff. Yeah, so we are deploying on test network. Yeah, so now what we're gonna do is uh, we we'll create a basic um, simulation for supply chain. So first we uh, code the solidity code uh, which uh, Chirag has done. Yeah, and now. We'll get the ABI and address. How we get the ABI? Uh, see, this is the smart contract. So if you go to that uh, this thing, compile option. Here's an option for ABI, right? So if you copy this, it will print you that ABI thing. This is the, this is called ABI. So ABI is nothing. It's just compiled version of that code. So we can use it in our JavaScript or Python wherever we want to use, right? And we get this ABI and, uh, address. What is the address? Like uh, if we uh, deploy any contract. Right. Wait a second. Yeah. So this is the example. Uh, we go to here, and this is the contact address. So basically, we are able to uh, interact with blockchain using this contact address in ABI. So if you have ABI in contact address, you can uh, interact with it. And we are gonna build a, a backend using Fast API. So with this ABI and address, and uh, from Node Red, we can call this API and interact with the Ethereum, like send and uh, <clears throat> get the data. So this is the repository. I'll share the link. You can also check it out. Here is a code for everything, like a step how to install it. You can install it. This is the contract address we deployed and uh, everything you need. So here is a contract. You can see this contract. I'll explain it in a while. And. Uh, yeah, this is the node dead uh, JSON file. We'll gonna need it in some time. So if you don't have node dead, you can install it. Um, <clears throat> and uh, for node dead, you have to use uh, node JS also, right? Uh, you can install from node dead with download. Here's the website. You can check it out, and you can download it from here. Uh, yeah. So now, how? Let's let me explain the code. Mm, yeah. Am I audible? Hello. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. It's lagging a little bit, yeah. Uh, wait a second. Yeah. So basically, this is the code. Uh, we have a product ID and worker ID. Uh, so what we are gonna do is like uh, in supply chain, uh, we have three processes. Like uh, first, uh, a product is built. It goes from warehouses to some. Uh, just storing the data. Okay, so uh, this is the product. So here is the information about product, like ID, name, price, description, data, etc., and status. So what is the status? So every time uh, we get the information about data, uh, so we store that data in this structure. Okay, and uh, this worker thing is the name of the worker, ID, and timestamp. Okay, I'll explain you in, in a little bit. So. You can check out this code. So this set worker function, what it does, 
it will uh, take that worker uh, uh, information from the argument thing this name id and timestamp and it will push it to the data da what is the data workers so this is a explain the data workers so what is the workers it it will basically a mapping like you can call it a dictionary so it will store uh, with a integer to a worker structure this is the worker structure right so yeah so this is and here we can add the product here you can add the st uh, status it's nothing this is a basic code like we did in c or c plus plus like uh, we just create an instance about that uh, structure and push it into the array it's a simple code and here we whatever the list is there like product list we just printing it's not a very complex you can check it out so i'm not wasting my time here uh, yeah so now first i'll show you the demo and uh, so you'll understand it better like uh, uh this is the node red uh you can get this from here like uh, this json file you can copy this and you can go to the uh, import thing and paste it here so you can get this one right so what it is uh first this is timestamp like uh, it's a inject button like you can inject it and it will print the st stuff right and we'll call it of uh so here uh we have nothing like we have payload in topic so we'll take data in payload right and here's function so here function we can add some data like some uh another location okay this thing so this is for post method i'll uh, first uh, show you about that uh, <clears throat> get data yeah so this is the inject button it will trigger the function in this function we have uh, api request so we'll get this data okay and this is the json so it will basically convert it into json json file is uh, here mm -hmm. there it is yeah here and is the it will print the uh, statement um, yeah so if i do this yeah see you can see it's it's print the this yeah, this thing uh, yeah so i'll tell you about the api first and then we'll do that so like for this step solidity to fast api i'll explain you this process right so first we'll import the web3 library then uh, we have a web3.http provider which is helps to connect to the blockchain and then this is abi which we copied from the here uh, this thing then we have key and account key and account means this account's key and this is the account number and if you want the key uh, we can see it here uh, yeah this is the key so it's it's, a, it's supposed to be private but this is for testing purpose we can show it yeah and this is the contact deployed address as sirax has shown you how to deploy it so you just have to copy this address after deploying and after that uh, what we are doing here is uh, first i'll show you about the uh, set worker example okay so here transaction equal to deployed contract deployed contract basically that uh, a function web3 dot eth dot contract so it will have we have to mention the address in abi and we'll get this thing so this is an instant of basically deployed contract so in deployed contract we have functions called set called set worker so as we can see here uh, wait a second see this is the set worker function so we can call this function from our api this one function dot set worker we have specified the name and uh, this is the build transaction process so build transaction uh, we have to do this when we have to uh, deploying something on the internet right and uh, this is the basic process like sign the transaction and uh, we'll get the transaction then we print the transaction so it's nothing uh, you need to worry about and similarly we did for add product and add status also right and uh, get worker list so basically deploy contact dot function dot get workers list so this is a functions dot something means uh, we're uh, getting function from that uh, abi stuff right yeah, this is the function get workers list okay yeah so this is the thing and in main dot py we just created a basic python api so here we import fast api so you can check it out it's very simple 
So app equal to fast API, uh, um, basically uh, initializing the fast API stuff. App dot get index this one, and uh, this is basically adding middleware. So I'll show you the API so you'll understand. Like localhost eight thousand. Localhost eight thousand. Slash docs. Yeah, so this is the API. So if you want to get the workers list, you go to try it out and execute. So it will send you that list of the this thing like Alice, Bob, Amy, and Raditya. And if I want to add uh, a worker, so what I'll do, uh, like uh, I'll type IO thing okay, and execute it. It will took some time to uh, post the data to the blockchain because of the network traffic. Yeah, so in within fifteen to thirty second, it will post the data. Yeah, it's posted. So worker is added. So now if we check, as you can see, worker is added. Its ID is five, and this is the current timestamp, right? So this process there. Similarly, we can do for product like get the uh, product information. Uh, try it out. Execute. So these are the product. We can add many uh, products and their status. Okay. So let's try to um, wait a second. Add a project. Product timing. So this is the product. Okay. So try it out. So yeah, I think I think. Size is also description is also so what we are doing here basically is like uh, so say this is a sample uh, sensors okay so what we what we are basically doing is uh, we are getting the data from sample for this uh, test purpose uh, i we just take it manually but uh, in real life we can take this data from uh, like real life samples or aws or to some other platform and it will scan that uh, uh, that thing scan that uh, information and it will uh, send it to node that so from node that uh, like from here it will uh, it will call that api for the api it's just a simple basically http node you, which you can get from here uh where it is wait a second ah uh, this one http request here you have to mention the url and then it's done like it will send you the data so you can send and uh, get the data from here yeah so like product is added so we can check it from here Yeah, see this one. It's added. And if you want to check it like real data, so we can go to that contact. This is the contact address. Just paste it here. As you can see, we called it uh, API uh, one meter ago and three meters ago. Yeah, so this is it. And here, note yes. So if you want to change something like uh, if you request the data, and you want to say like uh, if temperature we are getting, for example, we are getting data in temperature for a particular medicine or some like uh, vaccine or something. So if, Uh, the data should not be less than 17 or 18 something some degree so if it's uh, goes at particular temperature you can send the email and also upload it to the blockchain and uh, users can uh, at the like a uh, real world they can track where their data is from here like as you can see the data is accurate like one minute ago or uh, who sent it the data we can see it from here like api like uh, for product we can see this uh, pro uh, wait second where is status Um, wait a second. This is the status. So we will uh, just put the status of product. It will send you like at this location at this time frame. Uh, this is the data. This is the 
a worker id and this is the product id and false means uh, like uh, the product is not yet uh, reached the destination so we can get this kind of data and uh, do the calculations now uh, let's just uh, see what's in that api uh, so here it include the router for worker router see this thing and if we go to the worker router it's nothing it's just a uh, uh, basically router or get so it will get that worker list worker list will get from here contract this one and uh, for this post stuff like post the worker you can see it from here like this is the main file right here all the logic of our code here otherwise we just uh, like uh, getting it through that api stuff yeah so this it is uh, anyone having doubts hello am i audible uh, no doubts yeah okay yeah so this is the basic stuff so i know it's a little bit complex uh, but if you learn if you learn about this stuff uh, you can see this one and like it will be very helpful uh, so basically solidity is here uh, i'll explain what we did in a short process so first we write the solidity code okay uh, this is the code right we'll take the worker information product information we add the structures like how we're going to store it in database we define arrays like product list array, uh, product status array, worker list array, and uh, we just add the data to the blockchain. Uh, create a, basically we create a function to add the data to the blockchain, right? And after that, we'll take this ABI in address. So you can get this ABI from here. This ABI after the, like you just copy this stuff, go to here, and like paste it, and you will get this API from here. ABI and for a uh, contract address you can get it from uh, the blockchain where you deployed the uh, contract right after that uh, we are taking this uh, we are using this data and create, uh, convert uh, it into EVM format table ABI is basically application binary interface so uh, it will help us to create uh, the solidity code into a readable language like where we can use it like in uh, JavaScript and Python so to do that we we just need to uh, pass it here w w3.tts.contact address is equal to address this address is the block uh, contact address and uh, sorry, this is python uh, and this is the account like uh, the account we have shown here right and uh, Account and this is the uh, key uh, private key of that account. Yeah, and then we just basically define the function like uh, it's nothing. You can just copy this stuff and uh, use it from yourself. Like that set worker only have that variable name, right? So you we just uh, writing the name here, and uh, in def function we're just taking the name. In that add product we have four fun four uh, uh, arguments: name, price, description, data. So what you do deploy contact dot functions dot add product and write all this uh, four steps right so we define the data and create a basic api so if you learn flask or uh, fast api this will be uh, like very simple it's very basic api like we just have to router dot get for get request and uh, return whatever you want and for post request and just uh, do this and it will return that thing so what is product equal to product so basically we create a class called product so if we give data from backend so we should have give uh, data in this format like name must be string price must be string description must be string and data must be string so this kind of stuff and it will take that uh, product dot name like product is basically that's class one class dot name product dot price product dot description product dot data etc and we'll send this data from this router dot post router dot status you can see it here in this uh, stuff i also deployed the live api so you can check it Here is the live API, so you can check it. Post request is uh, restricted, but you can check the get request. Like you can manually check it out using this. 
yeah so it will uh, get the uh, data you can check it out and uh, we reached this step now from node drag uh, as I already explained uh, this first uh, initialize this uh, inject button then function for getting uh, for the payload this is for post request so you just mentioned message dot payload equal to this data you want to send to blockchain so location data uh, worker id product id and flag so this is similar to this one add status you can see location data worker number product number product id and flag and you just send it like uh, some another location okay data maybe 15 10 okay and uh, this is the http request which will send the data and here we can see it so let me turn this off confirm deploy yeah it's there so just deploy it so yeah this will deploy in a in a minute so we'll see it later and now we call this api and this fast api i mean this api we created it will interact with the blockchain as you can see it, it will uh, deploy it in some time because it takes time to refer to the ethereum yeah see this is pending this is uh, this is taking the data from the dpa yeah status added yeah so if we refresh it again yeah we can see this yeah this thing is added we can confirm it from here also like uh, product id status now wait a second uh, this is the right thing so you see first it was only this some location now it's added to some other location data is same this is the worker id this is the product id <clears throat> yeah now uh, yeah that's it uh, if you have any questions you can ask or we can end this session uh, can you give like a good resource for learning solidity or about um, yeah, yeah so, so about node there's no dead stuff now so uh, for the node dead stuff you can go to that node dead website uh, yeah so there they have tutorials like let, let me show you so first is uh, documentation and you can go here so this is a get started so i also learned it from here it's not very tough like learning locally you can see all that stuff here. like how to install it and all this process like uh, install it npm and all this stuff and there's cookbook also like uh, uh, this one so here's all here are all the basic example like for http we send the get request now so this is the basic example like how we can send it so for cook uh, for uh, node red this is the like uh, very important stuff In, uh, about node there are not there are not many like uh, great tutorials about that but uh, this uh, you can easily learn it from it's not very tough and for solidity we have uh, a solidity by example um uh, this this thing Yeah, so you can learn it from here. It's basically like it's a eighty percent similar to C language. So if you know C language, it's not it will not be very tough for you. Also, there's crypto zombies. Crypto zombies. Ah, crypto zombies. This one is like a, it will uh, teach you in a game manner. Like uh, like they will give you a little bit like. Uh, mission kind of stuff so you have to basically solve it like using coding mm, anything else and for fast api uh, like uh, it's very simple you can check it out there's an official yeah yeah what is uh, this is tutorial section here and uh, this stuff it will show you like basic step from uh, basic to advanced like first step okay like uh, define from fast api import fast api initialize the fast api uh, <clears throat> library and app dot get so if you do this it will just uh, print the hello world here on that this console like local top this is basically swagger ui so it will help us uh, visualize that uh, whatever we have made so that's the best thing about that uh, fast api yeah okay 
uh, if anyone has doubt, you can ask now. Uh, yeah, okay, then we can end the meeting. Uh, yeah, thank you for thank you all for joining this meeting. I hope uh, we'll see you again uh, in the next session. So maybe we'll do some more interesting about AWS IoT and uh, things speak in next session. So yeah, thank you. <clears throat>